together in prayer. We want to thank all of those who are watching both locally, regionally. You are part of our TBC Global, amen, our global church. So thank you for tuning in week after week for Bible empowerment teaching here at the Tabernacle. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We bless you for this day. We thank you for this holy week, this Passion Week, which we celebrate your gift and the suffering of your son. Thank you now for this time of study. Open our hearts, our minds to the word that we may grow, that we may glean insight and spiritual understanding of the word. Teach us, Holy Spirit. You are our life coach, and I ask you to use me again as your spiritual conduit to communicate your word to your people in this place. In Jesus' name, we bless you and honor you, and we say hallelujah, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's declare our faith. Amen. You got your Bible, your iPad, your iPhone. Let's declare our faith in the Word. Amen. Shout with me. The Bible is the Holy Word of God. I am what it says I am. I am a faith believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am what the Word says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. As I read the Word, study the Word, stand on the Word, I can have every promise of His Word in my life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm anointed to win. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, today, saints, I want to take a different perspective, and we've been teaching about the, the person, the power, and the promises of the Holy Spirit, but this is Holy Week, amen? And so the Holy Spirit directed me for this week to take a different turn, and so I want to call your attention uh, to the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, amen. And we'll begin uh, reading at verse uh, 39 uh, in the gospel according to St. Luke, amen. Praise God, praise God, amen. Luke chapter 22, and, and let's just read the scripture, and then, then uh, we'll read at, we'll look at a portion of the scripture, rather, and then, then we'll give some exposition and uh, teaching and instruction and, uh, and glean what, what the Lord has said, amen. The word of God says in verse 39, and coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed. And his disciples also followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And when he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly that, more earnestly rather, then his sweat became like drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose from prayer, and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Arise, rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Amen. Is that what your Bible says in essence? Amen. Well, today's lesson, I want to hear the Holy Spirit, I heard the Holy Spirit saying to talk about the power of resilient prayer. Amen. Let's say that together. The power a resilient prayer, amen, the power of resilient prayer this week as we celebrate uh, Holy Week or Passion Week, it is the most uh, sacred celebration of the Christian faith, amen, we reflect on the prophetic promises of Christ, amen, of God through Christ, the Old Testament, uh, throughout the Old Testament, it talked about him coming and his coming as a wounded healer, uh, all of the, that he had talked about, and then when Jesus came on the scene, he taught, he came as God incarnate, the word made flesh. And so 
uh, for 33 and a half years uh, uh, on earth. And now all of that is coming to the close of Passion Week. On Sunday, he rides into uh, Bethany, rides into Jerusalem on the donkey, and he comes in. They're hailing him, uh, you know, on Palm Sunday. They're all saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And that word Hosanna really means save now. And they thought Jesus had come as a a political or military leader, but Jesus didn't come as a necessary, a physical military leader. He came as Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Amen. Though he is the descendant of David, he is a prophetic promise of David, but he had come on a whole different purpose, on a whole different scale. And so they didn't understand that. But as we look at uh, all that Jesus had taught, all that he had said, and from, 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 from the prophecy of the Old Testament, the fulfillment of the New Testament. In fact, if you read the very last verse in the gospel of, according to St. John, John, uh, John 15, 25, the Bible says everything that Jesus did, amen, everything that Jesus did, he said there were so many things that Jesus both said and did that, that, that if they were written one by one, the world itself, Amen. The, the, the world itself couldn't contain the books that could have been written about everything that Jesus did. But God used the, the four gospels, the four writers. He met the synoptic gospels. Say synoptic. The synoptic gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They're called the synoptic gospels. They're called synoptic because they share the same stories, but they tell it in a slightly different way. Amen. Everything is not necessarily as chronological or historical order, but they told everything that Jesus did as they, it was told. And then the fourth gospel is called the Gospel of John. Amen? It is called the Johannine Gospel, the fourth gospel. But when you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's believed that Mark is the oldest gospel, and then Matthew and Luke drew from them. But, but, and then, of course, we know Luke wrote the, God, wrote the book of Acts. But as we look in in Luke's gospel, Luke's testimony, amen, Luke tells us those things that happened leading up to um, Good Friday and particularly sometime during the week uh, as Jesus goes through all that he goes through. He, he shares the Passover meal with the disciples in this same chapter, institutes what we call the Lord's Supper. He lets them know that he is now the new Passover lamb. And that's why he's, you know, when he shared the, the communion meal with the disciples, he took the bread, broke it, and blessed it. And then he said, take, eat, this is my body. He's preparing them. He took the cup, drank from the cup, and said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, the New Testament, the new covenant in my blood, this do in remembrance of me. That's why when you see the communion table, it's a reminder, this do in remembrance of me. In other words, Jesus let them know just as Moses was uh, Moses uh, in the Old Testament when they were getting ready to come out of Egypt, he told them uh, to take the lamb and he instituted the what they call Passover, take the blood of the lamb, put it on the sides of the doorpost and on the top of the lantern of the post. And, and, and when the, when the, the night that, that the, the death angel comes through, amen, he will pass over the houses where the blood was placed on the door. That's why it's called pass over. And that was to be a perpetual reminder, a remember. They are to celebrate that until, amen, forever. They are to forever remember where they were. They were in Egypt. 400 years of abundance, and God brought them out with a mighty hand. So he said, always remember Passover. You didn't bring yourself out, but God brought you out. Amen? He wanted to remind them. So Jesus is sharing that Passover, and so he institutes a new Passover. Uh, this Passover is not uh, just for the Jews uh, coming out of Egypt, but it's for sinners coming out of sin and bringing sin out of us. Amen? He is the new Passover. He is the lamb. So, so someone even wrote a song that you don't have to slay the lamb anymore. You don't have to put the blood on the door. Amen? Jesus has, has taken the place of the lamb. He is the great I am. 
thank God for the lamb. Can you imagine if we had to still bring uh, some lambs and, and sacrifices, amen, got to go, go from Lincolnton, got to come from South Carolina, got to get one stop by Cherryville, going to stop by the store up here on the corner. The, the, I think the man on the, on, the, on the corner, right on the end, there would be all kinds of folks sitting up little, you know, little, little, little lamb shops and stuff. Hey, hey, you need to go? I, I, I can hook you up, you know, real cheap. You know, I know the man down the street, they're high. You can cross, you, you, somebody said, well, I can go down to South Carolina and get one real cheap. Uh, I can get one they're cheap over in Lincoln. Uh, but, but can you imagine and the bloodiness and all of that? We'd have to bring the land. Oh, praise God, we don't have to do that anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God for the lamb. Amen. I said all that because it brings us to the place because when we understand the lamb, the lamb was slain for us. And that really was the prelude of Christ. Christ became that lamb and all the suffering, all that he went through, that's what he was trying to prepare his disciples for to let them know, amen, it's, it's about to get ugly in a few days. And, and he let them know, as I shared on Sunday, that, listen, the, the Son of Man, he's going to be arrested. He's going he, he's gonna, he's gonna, to he's gonna be betrayed. In fact, as John tells us when they were sitting at the, at the, last, at the, at the Passover meal, uh, Jesus said, one of y'all is a devil. One of you, what, what, how do you say it? One of you has a devil. One of you are a devil. One of y'all got a devil. That, that's what it was. One of y'all going, he was saying, one of y'all going to betray me. Can you imagine sitting at the table, 12 at the table, and everybody hanging out in intimate fellowship, and, and all of a sudden he says, one of you, one of y'all, one of y'all, one of you is a devil. One of y'all going to betray me. And everybody started looking around, who, 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 who is it? You know, you know, even, even you know, one, one, one of those uh, that, that uh, you know, that was packing might have said, well, who is it? We'll, we'll, we'll handle this now. Let, let's deal with this now, Jesus. You know, come on, come on. Who, who is it? And, and, and can you imagine the, the, the surprise on their faces looking around the table saying, wait a minute, one of y'all, one of you is a devil. And then he had to tell Peter, Peter, you're going you gonna to deny me. You know, you're going, you're going, you're going, and then not only are you going to deny me, but the rest of you are going to scatter. As I read through this and as we read through this, you can't help but to try to envision or try to imagine all that Jesus went through that week. Okay, that's what I want to just really paint that because during this week, this is not just a, okay, it's Easter Sunday morning. It ain't got nothing to do with bunny rabbits and, and, and Easter eggs and all that. Not, we got to, as faith believers, we got to remember all that Jesus went through both physically, spiritually, emotionally. Can you imagine the emotional drama and trauma he's bearing knowing that one, one of my trusted disciples is going to betray me. He's going to sell me out for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, the other who boasted that he'll go to jail and prison, even die with me, he, he's going to deny me. And then the other, other nine are going to scatter like roaches. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. They're going to scatter. They're going to be nowhere to be found. Can you imagine? All three and a half years, they were invested in three and a half years you know, they've left their fishing business, they've left their job, they've left their taxes, all that, and they've walked together, fellowship together, and it comes down to the final week, few days, and then he, he knowing, Jesus knowing that in a few days, he's got he's to gotta do something he's never done. He, 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 he is the life giver, but he's got to die. He's got to be separated from the Father. He's got to become the sacrificial lamb for the sins of the world, and knowing his death is not because of any crime he's committed. He hadn't done anything wrong, but yet he's got to die for somebody else. That's love, y'all. That's love. And, and, and the death on the cross, uh, the, the Roman uh, death, it, it, it wasn't like, okay, pow, shoot you, and it's over, you know, or, or some lethal injection. But this was the most horrific, most barbaric form most cruel form of death you can think of at that time because, number one, they're going to beat him. You know, the Romans strike, the 39 strikes or more, they're going to beat him. They're going to do all the stuff. He's going. Jesus got all this on him, but it, in order to handle what he had to handle, he knew the power of resilient prayer. 
That's what we're going to talk about. I know I said a whole lot, but, but that's where I'm going. That's the whole lesson of the power of resilient prayer because Jesus teaches us during his passion. We, he taught us uh, in, on, on, in the Sermon on the Mount. He taught us, the disciples asked him to teach us how to pray. He taught us the model prayer earlier. But here we see resilient prayer. We see how in the midst of your inner pain, your inner turmoil, in the midst of the, the greatest struggles of life, he teaches us how to be resilient in prayer. All right? And so, let's go to, the, let's go to Gethsemane. All right? Come on. Let's go to Gethsemane. So, the Bible says, uh, you know, after he has had, 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 had shared with them, instituted the Lord's Supper, uh, told, excuse me, Peter, He's going to deny him. You know, in fact, he told Peter, Satan has asked, Simon, Satan has asked uh, for you, ha ha has demanded for you that he may sift you as wheat. But, 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 but I want you to know that, but I've prayed for you that, that, that when you are converted, when you have returned, I want you to strengthen your brothers. That, that's in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. Uh, verse 32, and then he talks about uh, the, the supplies for the road, but, but, but ver they leave there. The Bible says they leave there, and, and he said to them, of course, they, they had talked about a sword. They, somebody said, you know, they looked here, they got two swords. But coming out, verse 39, this is what I want you to see. Come walk, walk with me. He went to what? The Mount of Olives. And the Bible says, as he was accustomed, all right? Y'all see that? As he was accustomed and his disciples also followed him. So one of the things I want us to see as we talk about, the, uh, the, the, talk about seven lessons, I want to call this seven lessons of, of, of prayer resilience from the Garden of Gethsemane. Seven lessons, amen, that we want to pull here. First of all, we, we see here that the place of prayer, the place of prayer. Look, look here, the place of prayer, and we see that Jesus has come to a place of solitude and silence, all right? Because the Bible says he, he went out to the Mount of Olive. This was an olive grove. This was a, a, a place where olive groves, like an olive garden were, where, where olive grew, and it was a, nothing but olive tree. So it was a solitary place. It was a sanctuary, if you will. And the Bible says, as he was accustomed, so he frequently went there. This was a place where he can get away from the hustle and the bustle uh, of the crowd. He wasn't on the sea because if he's on the sea, on the boat, folk coming and running. But Jesus would get there and often go there as a place of solitude to spend quality time with God. I want you to catch this principle because uh, the place of prayer, you and I need to always have quiet places where we can spend quality time with God, amen, whether you have a consistent place or where you find places. We ought to have a consistent place where you pray to God, you know, not just when you come to the altar, not just when you're at church, but in your own home. That, you know, if you got other people, I know many of you may be single or you live alone, so you got a little quiet space. But if you're married and got family, got children, even at that, you got to have a quiet place. Even on the job, you ought to have, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, take a bathroom break, restroom break, go in there, you know, and just get quiet. Not only that, but go to the park. Go, go, go find somewhere. Sit on the back porch. Sit on the deck. Find a place. It has to be a time where you and God can meet, solitude, where, 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 where you can shut down the hustle and the bustle of the world and just sit, sit quietly with God, okay? Because so many times we're rushing here and there, we're running, and we need to have time where we just sit, okay, quietly and just get in God's presence. That, that, that's what solitude and silence is all about, when we can get quiet enough to hear God. I just need to hear God. I don't need to hear the evening news, morning news, the, the, the Fox news, the, the MSN news, and all them other news. I don't need to hear my phone. I don't need to hear what's on social media. I don't need to hear what they're saying. I just need to hear from God. Y'all with me? Y'all remember in, in, the, in, in the book of, uh, of, of Kings, Elijah, 
Elijah had gone through all that he had gone through and, you know, had won the battle on Mount Carmel and, you know, great victory. Yeah, yeah. You know, all show up, the, the showdown on Mount Carmel and, and won that battle against all of those, uh, 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 the, the, the prophets of Baal and, and, and Elijah could stick his chest out and then the next day uh, that wicked Jezebel sent him a word said, listen, by I'm going to get you tomorrow. <laughs> Jezebel, she may have been from, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna, Jezebel said, I'm going to get you. And the prophet went from being a man of courage and strength, sticking his chest out, to he got a letter from that wicked queen saying, I'm going to get you. He took off running. You know, and so y'all know the story, Run, running and anyway, uh, out there and it ran out. He was burned out and tired and everything. And so anyway, long story short, uh, God, you know, God gave him, sent, sent an angel, sent him some, some food, got some strength. And so he, he found himself hiding in a cave. And, and while he's hiding in the cave, you know, the Bible says, he, you know, storm came by. God wasn't in the storm, earthquake. God wasn't in the earthquake. Wind, God wasn't in the fire. And so finally there was a still, small voice. Amen. We need to learn how to hear God's voice. If we're going to grow in our faith, we got to learn how to hear God's voice. To know when God is telling you to slow up. To know when God's saying to turn. When God said do this, do that. And, he, and, and you, you learn that by walking with God every day, developing that kind of intimate relationship with God, reading his word. It, it's the voice of God. You know, we've seen the, the cartoon characters where you see the God, the good angel on one shoulder and the, and the evil angel on the left. We need to know how to listen to the voice of God. We need to learn how to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that needs to be part of our prayer life. Lord, help me to know your voice. Help me to know when you're leading me, when you're guiding me, when you're saying this and when you're saying, when the Lord says get up, when the Lord says uh, lay down, when the Lord says stop, when the Lord says go. Learning his voice. And many of you, I know you've known, you've learned the voice of God. When God directs you to do something, you know it's God. You're led by God. That's the Holy Spirit. And that, that, that comes in your walk with God as you're learning to grow, learning to hear him, learning to walk as a believer, learning to know when it is the voice of God and when the Lord is speaking to you. That is important as a faith believer. When to tell you, he'll tell you, get up and read the word, and he'll show you where to read. All right? Sometimes you just open the word, and you, you say, well, why did I open here? There's a word right there. He, there's a lesson he wants to teach you. And then sometimes he's trying to teach a specific lesson that, that we need. Sometimes we need to get a concordance, or sometimes just need to look at certain topics that we need to learn. We need to grow. We need to learn from. Amen? As a pastor, as a, as a shepherd, I have to learn to listen to him. Not y'all. I listen to you all, please understand. But, but when it comes time to the preaching, the teaching of the word, I got to get my instruction from him. Okay? Some churches uh, are so controlled by boards and groups and, and people that preacher got, well, I got to preach what they want me to preach. I gotta, you know, that's a slave to the people. You're not a slave to people. We're servants of God. Okay? We, and, 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 and everything we do, we can't be pleasing people. All of us, our responsibility is to please God. And I promise you, when you know the voice of God and, and you hear the voice of God and the Lord says, uh, you know, do turn right, turn left, do this, do that, and you know it's God. Sometimes it don't always seem to make sense in the natural, but you know it's God. And then God will confirm, I heard the voice. You know, a lot of times people, people say, well, you know, some told me. How many of us, all of us have said that? So, you know, some told me. We got to stop listening to the say, stop saying, some told me. And know as a child of God, I know it's the Lord listening to me. I know the Lord speaking to me. In fact, make it a, be intentional in asking God, Lord, let me know your voice and let me hear your voice. Let me obey your voice. Let me follow your voice. Let me follow your lead. Amen. I ask him every day, Holy Spirit, you guide me. Just as we've talked about, the Holy Spirit is that indwelling person dwelling in us. Who, who, he dwells in us, teaching us. He's our life coach. So he's showing us, God, show, show us, show me. You know, that's got to be our prayer, show me. You know, God will give you creative concepts even on your job. He'll help you to, to do things, how, how to get 
uh, something done, how to get the job done, how to, whatever you're doing. He'll help you to be a better man, better husband, better wife, better person, how, how, you know, how to live saved and, and single and, and, and sanctified and satisfied until the Lord does, says otherwise. Amen. He'll help you, all right? He'll help you as a man. He'll help you as a woman. He'll help you. He'll help you to deal. How to, sometimes even married couples, the Holy Spirit will show, show you how to hold your peace. Amen. Let the Lord fight your battle. Sometimes he'll tell you, hush, 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 zip it. You know, hush mouth or no, no, don't say that. I know you thought it, you want to say it. Uh, no, don't say it, don't say it. No, not now. He, he, come on now, married folk, y'all, 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 it's all right to say amen. Your spouses ain't here today. But, but, but we go through those experiences. <laughs> I got 35 years in. I know, I know. Sometimes I want to say it, but the Holy Spirit said, no, hush, man. No, 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 no. You know, choose your battles, choose your war. You know, learn. Because sometimes we may want to say something, uh, but but sometimes it's not expedient to say something. Sometimes you got, you know you don't have to say anything because sometimes you you get in the, you know get in the wrong spirit. But anyway, I'm talking about solitude. Solitude. That's where I want to go. Let's get let's get back on point. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Solitude. Amen. And one of the things I, I don't mind sharing with you. We, you know we we got parks around here. Sometimes just pull pull. Pull, to, pull into the park and just get quiet. Sometimes sit in your car before you go to work. Don't just rush to the job and pull up. You know, take two minutes. Just sit. Sometimes breathe. Amen? Breathe coming in and breathe going out. Even when you come home, you know, if you deal with stuff on your job, uh, you know, learn, sit in the car for a minute, breathe, and, and don't take that in your house. Don't take all that stuff, all that, that, you know, all that dumb folk and stuff you done dealt with it, the, the, on the job. They done got on your last reserve nerve. You know, you don't want to cuss one time, want to cut somebody two times, and, and want to shoot somebody three times. All that, leave all that at, at the job. Roll down the window, and, and, you know, before you get, don't even let it in your car. Roll down the window. Don't take it in your house. Learn to breathe. Say breathe. breathe. Exhale. We have to learn to do that. I have to, I, we have to learn to ju- let, just breathe. You know what? Because the enemy will try to, try to overwhelm you with stuff. You know, Jeff, when you go to prison, don't bring all that prison stuff to your house. Man, all them venomous spirits and stuff, leave that at the ju- Breathe, okay? When I come home with ministry over the years, my wife asked her, how was your day? It was fine. It was blessed. That's all she get. It was blessed. She, she ain't going to get no information from me. It was blessed. Because I don't want to talk about all the stuff I done dealt with. I don't go down the line, I dealt with, well, she sick, she dying, he, he crazy, he, all, no. <laughs> he don't got, they don't got, my, no, leave all that. Because when I come home, I want to be in a place of solitude. Okay, praise the Lord. But Jesus found his place of solitude. Find your place of solitude. When you get up and read the word, get quiet with God. Before you pray, get quiet with God. Settle yourself, Okay. Get quiet with God. Find a quiet place. Amen. And that's what this place of solitude and silence was for Jesus. It was his habitual place. It was his his habit. It was his customary place. In fact, go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. I love love this verse. I love this verse. Amen. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. If you're going to if you're going to develop uh, resiliency and, 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 and like Jesus, you, you got you to gotta follow his example. We are, we are disciples, right? We are Christians, right? What, that means we, we got to be like Christ. Well, what did Jesus do? How did Jesus handle the stress and strain of all, dealing with all them personalities, all them folk? He found his strength in prayer. He found a place of prayer, all right? The Bible says in, 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 in Mark chapter 1, uh, verse 35, you're there? Mark 1, 35, the Bible says, now what? In the morning, having risen, this is a powerful lesson by itself, risen what? A long while, a great while, when? Before daylight. Amen. Jesus got up early. And, and, and before he started the day, uh, he, or he started the day, before he met the world, he met with God. He, he, he had risen a, a, a long while before daylight, all right? He went out and what? Departed to a solitary, a isolated place and did what? There he prayed. Now, I'm not saying you got to get up and go, out, go outside and all that. No, he's not saying we got to do all that, but, but we ought to have a, a solitary place. Quiet, where you get quiet with God. I love, it's something about being up early in the morning though. Right? I don't know whether I got in the early morning risers or not. Uh, some of y'all may be early risers. Some of y'all like, no, I, I don't. 
I, you know, I'm, I, I can't get up with you. I can't get up with you that early. So some folk get up with the chickens, with the, get up with the roosters and go to bed with the chickens. Some, some, some of these countries saying, you know, go to bed with the chickens. That means go to bed at sundown, sun, sundown and get up before the rooster crows. You get up early. But there's something about that morning. Amen. There's something about morning before, before daylight. It, it's something about it. Amen. Uh, we just finalized uh, Deacon um, Brother Early, uh, Daddy Early Cathcart, and he talked about uh, that midnight prayer when the shorthand and the longhand meet. He, he prayed at midnight. Amen. There's power in noonday prayer. There's power just in prayer when you can just sit quietly and rather than you doing all the talking, rather than you pray, point out to God, sometimes just sit quietly. That, that's called settling before God. Settle yourself. Breathing. That, that, you know, most coaches and, and life coaches and therapists call it breathing. Learning to center. They call it centering. You, you're centering, you know, and we got to be careful not to borrow some, you know, Middle Eastern transcendental meditation. But, but, but we understand it's really centering in God. You're focusing on God. You're, you're closing out the world. That's why Jesus said when you go into your closet. You remember he said close the door when you go in your closet and pray your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Learn how to close out the world because that's your, you, and, you and your prayer time with God. Amen. Jesus taught us how to center our focus, our mind, our heart, our spirit on him, on God and pray to the father. Our Father, amen, which art in heaven. Don't just go to God with, don't open up to God all the time with just your problem. God, I bless you. God, I thank you. God, I worship you. Lord, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. I praise you. I thank you for dwelling in me. Heavenly Father, that's why Jesus said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Okay? When the last time you told God, I love you? This morning, praise God. I won. That was quick. All right, Peter. Peter this morning, <laughs> super. Go to the head of the class, and that's what that's got to be a part of our daily prayer life. So many Christians, they we spend so many Christians spend their time going to God, and we've got the wrong conception of God as if He's just some cosmic Santa Claus or some cosmic genie. We come to God with all of our problems, our want list, our wish list, but we don't go to God with our worship. Just go to God, I love you. I bless the Lord. Psalm 34, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you just make God proud and happy and know that God, all I want, God, I just call, God, I love you. I sometimes, I'm, 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 you know, I've said it often, but I can be riding down the road and pull up to the stop sign and just, you know, God, I think, I just, I mean, just, it, don't, it may not make sense to you, but it makes sense to me. God, I just, I just applaud you. I just, I celebrate you. God, I thank you. God, God, I praise you for who you are. You know, you, you know sometimes you see people and, and life has happened either by choices or circumstances and you, you know, you start thinking, that could have been me. That could have easily been me. You know, outdoors, or on the street, nowhere to sleep, nowhere. God, and I pray for them. God, I thank you. And I pray for them, you know, amen. So th th you got to find a solitary. So, so the first place, first point of, of power on your list is the, the, we see in the text is the place of prayer. If you don't remember anything else today, remember solitude and silence, all right? Solitude and silence. Learn to get quiet with God. Spend quality time. Your QT shouldn't be the, just the just a local uh, service station, amen, where you go in and get a, a, <clears throat> a, a sweet tea and, 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 and uh, some ice, <laughs> QT, get some gas, but you ought, to, you ought to have some QT with God, quality time with God. Y'all with me? The second thing is the priority of prayer, the priority of prayer is protection. Look at what he says in verse, verse number 40, amen. I'm, I'm going to probably run, uh, when I say run, I'm, I'm going to probably go a little faster than we have in, in the past, amen. Let's go back. Let's go back to, um, to our, our red text, which is Luke chapter um, the 22. Amen. Let's go back. Let's go back. 22. All right. And we're looking at uh, verse 41. All right. First point is, uh, first point uh, it was 39. Uh, verse 39, we see the place of prayer, which is solitude and silence. But then verse 40, we see the priority of prayer is protection. Look at what Jesus says to them. And he said, when he had come to the place, he, noticed, he said to them, he said what? Pray. He gives them responsibility. Pray. And I want you to read this as if Jesus is talking to you. You're in the garden now, right? 
You are in the garden, right? <laughs> We're in the garden. He said, pray that you may not, what, enter into temptation, all right? Pray that you might not enter, you're going, you know, you're going to be tempted, but that don't mean you have to be yield to the temptation, all right? Jesus knew that they were human. He knew they were finite. He knew they were weak. They knew they were, uh, they, they were vulnerable. So he says to them, pray for your own protection. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Wasn't that what Jesus taught us in, in Matthew chapter Again, the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 13, he says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or the evil one. Temptation going to come. Let's be clear. I don't care who you are. On this side of glory, on this side of heaven, as a child of God, temptation going to come. There's no, there's no way around temptation. Every one of us is going to be tempted. And the devil knows what you like, what you don't like, what you, what you love, what you don't love. He knows what can distract you. He knows what can deceive you. He knows what can defeat you. He knows what can drain you. He knows what can drive you crazy. Come on. <laughs> Amen. He knows all that. He's been watching you. He's been watching your prayer habits. He's been watching your QT. He's been watching how much time you've been spending. He's been watching your prayer habits. That's why we got to be watchful at all times. We are not to be paranoid with the devil. Oh, the devil is, this. you know, like we're watching for ghosts. And No, the devil is already defeated. He's defeated. We, we, are, we are more than conquerors. I'm, we're anointed to win. So the devil don't bother me. The devil ain't going to, he, you know, we don't fear the devil. You know, God hasn't given us even a spirit of fear. Come on, Bible readers, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You know what that sound mind means? My mind is settled. My mind is safe. You know, I'm not going to be walking around here, oh, Lord, and I'm not going to be giving the devil any props. I'm not going to be giving him no free publicity. The devil is so busy. No, he is busy. He's, just, he's busy because he's defeated, and he's trying to find some way to find somebody to, to hijack. He's a ISIS. He, he's a terrorist. That's all. You know what terrorists do? Terror, terrorists to create terror. Create an atmosphere of terror and fear so that, oh, you're scared. Well, I can't go here. You can't do this. Well, child, you can't. No, I'm not going to be a POW. I'm not going to be a prisoner of war. I'm not walking around here scared. Uh, you know, you got to be like the gangster, the, 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 the rapper. Uh, I don't know his name. Y'all know it. I ain't never scared. <laughs> A ask your children, ask your family. I ain't never scared. You, you can't walk in fear. Don't walk in fear. We don't walk in fear. We walk in faith because we got the faithfulness of God. We got the favor of God on our life. Are y'all with me here? But Jesus says that we are to pray that we don't uh, yield to temptation. Pray that you may not enter into temptation. God, keep me. So that ought to be another part of your prayer. Lord, keep me. Keep my mind. Keep my heart. Keep my motives. Keep my mouth. Keep my, keep my moves, all right? Y'all got that? That's the second thing. So prior, priority of prayer is your protection. Got it? Thirdly, the posture of prayer. Let's look at the posture of prayer. Amen? Verse, um, verse 43 says, um, he told them, verse 41 said, and he was what? Withdrawn from them about what? A stone's throw, all right, which means, you know, uh, we don't really know how much distance that is about, you know, can you throw a, throw a rock? How far can you throw a rock? You know, people may try to, you know, have given interpretations of a stone's throw. That was just a, you know, a, a figure of speech, you know, about, about you know, he went further than. He went, he went beyond them, and notice what happened. He went about a, a, a stone's throw. A stone's, I don't know why my tongue twisting this morning. A, a stone's throw. <laughs> and then what? He what? He knelt down. Notice his posture. Jesus knelt down and what? And prayed. Bowing to God is a symbol of humility, is a symbol of, of honor, it's a symbol of worship, it's a sign of humility, it's a sign of God. I'm bowing before you. I'm humbling myself before you. I'm also yielding as a as a as a as as, as the sovereign God, as you are the so sovereign God. But we're bowing before God. Okay. So 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 it's good if you're still able to 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 bow in prayer, even at home. You know, we learn growing up, kneel down. You know, fold your hands. You know, even doing this is almost a symbol of, of what d d Brother Cathcart was saying, you know, that 12 o'clock. You know, we pray. Even when we say grace, all right, bow your heads, 
close your hand, let's pray. You know, we, that, that bowing your head is, is, is an act, it is a, is a sign, it's a posture of prayer. Amen? Praise God. Now, when you're driving, don't bow your head, don't close your eyes, <laughs> and don't fold your hand if you're driving. <laughs> if you are the designated driver, uh, the only time you do that is when you're at the red light, all right? When the light has stopped, don't, not even at, don't even try it at the stop sign. Just go to the red light if it stops. But otherwise, keep your eyes on the, on the road, amen? But isn't it, isn't it amazing, God, we can pray anytime. We can pray with our eyes open. You know, it's okay to pray, you know, even publicly, you know, but we, we, you know, out of our own custom traditions and our habits, we pray with our eyes closed. And one way uh, of closing our eyes it, is, is to close out distraction, okay? It is to close out the world. It's, it's the closing of the doors. It's, 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 it's the closing of the opening, closing the gates to the world, but opening our gates to heaven. Y'all got that? You're closing out the world, gates of the world. You're closing your gates, your eye gates, your ear gates to the world so that you can be focused on God. Amen? So, so, so Jesus, Jesus taught us a powerful lesson. He went and what? He bowed. He humbled himself. He submitted himself in prayer to God. All right? Y'all see that? And, and notice, notice what he says, what the Word of God says even in that posture because it says, uh, he, he, he said what? What did he pray? Look at his prayer, 42. He prayed what? Father, if it is your will, see, that, that surrender, take this cup away from me. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, he says, not my will, but your will be done. In our prayer, if we're going to be persistent in prayer, we got to learn the, not only the posture of prayer, but that posture is being surrendered to God. Because sometimes we're praying for something and we want God to do it our way, but God says that ain't the way I want it. That's not my perfect plan. And since we are limited, we can only see right now. God see the end from the beginning. So when we pray, God, let your perfect will be done in my life. Okay? This is what I want, God. This is what I, I believe, you know, I, I want to happen. And, 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 and there's nothing wrong with asking him specifically because we ask specifically, but then we have uh, to ask him, Lord, you know better than I do. You know, you know the thoughts you think toward me. You know the plan you have for me. And, 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 but, but, but if you have given me this plan and you've given me this vision, this will, then, then let your will be done. But here Jesus knew he had to deal with some pain. He knew he had to deal with suffering. So here in his prayer, in this prayer, his, his posture is, uh, is a prayer of surrender in not only his physical posture, but also in his prayer posture. Y'all see that? The physical posture, he bowed, all right? In his, in his, in his, in his spiritual posture, he surrendered, okay? Uh, not my will, but, but what? Your will be done. All right? There's a fourth principle I see here. First principle I see here that in, in the text. Notice Jesus had spiritual, we see the spiritual ministry presence and angelic support. Notice the word God says, verse 43, says what? Then an angel appeared to him from heaven and did what? Strengthening him. All right? Strengthening him. We, we've seen this before. Angels, God sending angels to support, to strengthen. When he was in the, in the wilderness, after he had gone through the, the 40 days and, and tempted, when the devil left, the Bible says angels came and ministered to him. They strengthened him. God will send you some angels, messengers from God. He, we not only have the Holy Spirit, but God can send an angel to encourage, to strengthen, to minister to us. Amen. Sometimes we thank God for invisible help, for that invisible presence. Hallelujah, write that down. The invisible presence of angels. I believe in angels. Some people may not, but I do. I do. I believe God will send some angels. So even when I travel, I, I ask God, 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 give me an angelic escort. Go before me. Make the way for me. Pave the way. Keep back debris. Keep back uh, hurt, harm, accidents, incident. Keep back anything that will, that will come. Airplanes, when I step on an airplane, amen, I've said it before, every time I step on an airplane, you know, you get ready to step from the, from the little tarmac, you step on the doorway, I touch the door. I do, I touch the door. In the name of, I just bless God, in the name of Jesus, 
You know, I, I bless this plane. I, the pilot, I don't wait till I get to the airport. I'm, when I get my ticket, Lord, I'm praying for the plane. I'm praying for the, praying, pray, praying for the, the, the pilots, the, 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 the servants, everybody. I want a safe journey. And, I, you know, even, even the turbulence in the air. Because if you've ever ridden on an airplane and, and you hit some of them turbulent pockets, amen, I, I don't know what's worse, going west or going to New York, amen. I was coming out of New York, I thought the plane was going to flop out the air. But anyway, that's not good English. But anyway, but looking at the clouds, I mean, it was a cloudy day in New York. One day, went some years ago, and, uh, and you could see the clouds before we took off, but when we got up in the air, it was as if the clouds were fighting, you know. But, uh, and it was just a rough ride until we finally, you know, everything smoothed moved out. But, but, but I, you know, in the name of Jesus, you, you got to learn to pray everywhere. Amen. We ought to be persistent in prayer. Amen. And sometimes that's a principle even in life. Sometimes we have turbulence in life, on the job. Sometimes things, don't, things happen, you know. Sometimes we deal with, Sister Rowe, we were talking about the situation, dealing with family members. Sometimes it can be, you know, dealing with a family member and, and, and things that we can't handle, it can be, seem like turbulence in our life. But, you know, sickness can create turbulence or setbacks. Stuff can break down when you least expect anything. Can so that can seem like turbulence in our life. But we have to know what we can't handle, God can. What we can't fix, God can. What we can't hold, God can. What we can't heal, God can. Amen. God got it. Amen. Praise God. So, so there's no need to send them that word about what you can't change. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and what? All these things will be what? Added unto you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wow. I'm glad I gave you the outline today. All right. <laughs> we got the fourth is spiritual ministry present. Number five, the peril of prayer and pain of prayer. Verse 44. Let me give them to you and then we'll come back and get them. Number six, the disappointment of prayerless people. Verse 45. And then prayer resilient. Staying on prayer alert over to overcome temptation. Let's, let's hit this real quick. Let's look at verse 44. Verse 44, the pearl, peril of prayer, all right? Look at what verse 44 says. And being what? In agony. This is the pain of prayer. Jesus is going through, y'all. The pain, the agony, the peril. Notice, look at, look at what it said. And he prayed what? More earnestly. Being in his, being in agony. Jesus was God. He was the son of God. He was, he was God incarnate, but he was also human. And the human side of Jesus, uh, knowing what he had to deal with, brought agony. He prayed more earnestly that his, his sweat became great drops of blood falling to the ground. I, I can't even fathom. Now, we've seen plays and we've seen movies and all that, but can't even fathom what he was dealing the agony he was dealing with. So the peril and pain of prayer, but sometimes you got to pray your way through. He teaches us, learn to pray your way through. Somebody shout, pray your way through. Then number six, we, we, the, the, the disappointment of prayerlessness. Because look at, look at what verse 45, he's over there, thrown, stole away, praying in agony and, 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 and for himself, and he arose from prayer, came to his disciples, he found them <laughs> sleeping <laughs> from sorrow, which means they were tired, you know. We, and we really don't know what time of day it was or time of night it was, really, because remember they had, they, it had to be at night because they, they, you know, they go from the, from the, they had been, ate the Passover meal, so, so, so it had to be at night. So brothers, just, you know, they took a power nap. But it doesn't excuse it, but he was disappointed that, that he had told them in, in verse 40 to, to that pray that you may not enter temptation, but it came back, found them sleep. All right? So they're disappointed Dis in verse 45. But verse 46, and we're going to close. All right? This is prayer resistant. We got to stay on prayer alert. He said to them again. Then he said to them what? Why do you sleep? He said, rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Enter to temptation. Jesus knew that, that, that Judas and his betrayers and others would come. He wanted them to be alert so that if the, tro if the soldiers would have walked up on them and grabbed them and they wake up out of their sleep, they will sure enough be, you know, like, what's going on? But he let them know that it is a critical moment, it's a critical hour, 
you need to be watching. You need to be praying. In other words, he's really asking them to pray for him, I think, because he knows what he had to deal with. Right? And that's why we need prayer warriors around us, prayer, always praying for one another. Amen? I, I'm praying for you. You pray for me. We don't ever know when we need prayer. Amen? We've got to keep each other in prayer. And we ought to make a covenant as, as members of the body of Christ, as children of the, body, of, of, of the body of Christ, the family of God, we ought to be praying for Christian believers at all times. That's why we have on our prayer list every week praying for uh, pastors, bishops, apostles, and prophets, those who are in authority, those who are in leadership, those who God has anointed, and as Mother Pinky Blair used to say, those that God anointed and those we appointed, those who are in political office. We ought to pray for others. When you're riding along the road, see a school bus, Pray for that bus driver. Pray for those children. When you pass by our school, pray, throw a prayer at that, at, 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 that, at that school for that principal. Amen, Sister Whitworth. Amen. Because we don't know what y'all have to deal with. The administration, you know, pass by the administrative bill. When you go by the hospital, don't just pray for those who are sick. Pray for those doctors. Pray for those nurses. Pray for those staff because they, they have a good, you know, they're having a, you know, amen, Sister, Sister Tammy. Amen. Pray for, you, you're having surgery in the OR or the ER or wherever you are. You ought to pray that that doctor had a good night's sleep and good night's rest so that when he's operating on that patient, he or she is alert. You know, all the instruments are sterilized. They're not over-sterilized. They're not under-sterilized. Pray for the whole staff. When you go by to visit a hospital, every floor, get, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for that. You know, pray for them. Just, just a couple of weeks ago when... when um, we, you know, going to the hospital, ironically, we were going to the hospital and, and walking down, just walking down the hallway, you know, we came around the corner and we was, there was a doctor just walking, you know, we were going in the same direction and, you know, cordial, good morning, how you doing, sir? And, you know, praying, for, you know, just said kind of, hello, how you doing? Fine, doing fine. His name was Powell. And so, you know, we said, well, we're heading down this way. He said, I'm heading, this, you know, we're heading in the same direction. Come to find out he was my wife's aunt's doctor. He was the he was he was the he was the cardiologist going to see her, and here we are just going in the same direction, you know. And I'm like, wow, we spoke, but we didn't realize we we're going to the same place. And so, uh, but you know, and we said, you know, we're praying for what you do. And I always tell tell doctors and 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 and, and nursing staff uh, and other people, I appreciate what you do. Learn to tell people you appreciate what they're doing. Even if the even the trash man, you know, hey, I'll be hollering at them. Hey, what's up? They be blowing. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, real? Hey, man, how you doing? Because they picking up my trash. You know, janitors or, or servers, you better treat them nice. You know, I appreciate what you do. Learn to appreciate people, amen, and pray for them. Praise God. I'm praying for you right now. Hallelujah. Y'all going to throw, throw a prayer? All right, Pastor, we bump prayer. <laughs> Holler at your boy. <laughs> Praise God. That's what I mean. It's reciprocal praying. So that's what the body of Christ do. Uh, let, me, let me see. Can I grab an old song? Okay. You pray for me, and I pray for you. That is the way God's children do. Amen. It, it, it's amazing that the wisdom our, our parents and foreparents had and, and, and those ahead of us. And so as we, as we walk in this Christian journey, it began to make sense now. It makes sense. A lot of sayings, wisdom sayings that they said and used, you know, it didn't, you know, they, they, they would say some stuff that didn't, you know, it was kind of off the shelf. But you, 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 you have a few birthdays and you walk with God, you begin to realize, wow, it makes sense now. They just said it in a different way. Heart fixer, mind regulator. Oh, okay, yeah, I got it now. <laughs> Amen. You keep my mind, God. I ain't crazy. I ain't insane because he keeps me in perfect peace. Heart fixer. I don't have to carry that, you know. Somebody hurt your heart, broke your heart, or gave you, you know, weighing on your heart. No, he, he fixed my heart. <laughs> I gave it to God. Mind regulator. Way maker. Okay, made a way out of made a way for you. So all those things, those those uh, the the language of uh, what we call the language of even the black church. All right, makes sense now. Praise God. Listen, I, I pray that you were blessed. I hope you got all seven points of this lesson. All right, we talked about the place of prayer, solitude and silent. We talked about the priority of prayer. Uh, for protection, we talked about the posture of prayer. Jesus knelt down, but also he surrendered. 
All right, we talked about spiritual ministry presence, angelic support, angels ministered to him. We talked about the peril and pain of prayer. There'll be times that you may have to struggle through prayer, wrestle with prayer. We talked about disappointment of prayerless people. Sometimes folk will let you down, and you think they're with you, and they, and they, ain't, they ain't supporting you. You sometimes find yourself praying by yourself, all right? And then seventhly, we, we, we got to stay on prayer alert in order to overcome temptation. Amen? God is so awesome. God is so good. Amen? Can we put our hands together and let's just give God a praise offering today? Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Uh, I've got some prayer, the prayer list that I want to lift up today. Amen. That uh, those who have either written in or called in and uh, we certainly want to continue to pray for all those on our healing and recovery list. We call it recovery because we believe they're going to get better. Amen. Praise God. And, and, uh, and even those who are gravely ill, terminally ill, amen, they're going to get better. Whether on this side or on the other side, we still believe they're going to recover. Praise God. But we know God is a healer because he told the children of Israel, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. And so Psalm 107, he said, you know, he sent his word and healed them. So let's continue to pray for those who've lost loved ones in the last um, a couple of days or weeks or so, uh, grief is, is real. We pray for Trazen Wright and the Wright family. His aunt passed away. Uh, she, her name was, uh, she was a Lynch, so uh, Linda Lynch. So she passed away on Saturday as well. Uh, continue to pray for, of course, Lady Hinton and, and, of course, our family, her aunt, Mildred White Hall. Uh, she's going to be funeralized on tomorrow. Uh, in Dublin, Georgia. So y'all pray for her. Pray for us as we travel. We pray for Scott Long. He's in ICU in Presbyterian Hospital. We're praying much for him. Uh, he's in critical care, critical uh, con- uh, care, but God is able. Praying for Gladys Adams, of course, uh, her brother uh, Herbert Ryan and, and all of the Adams family and the Ryan family. Brenda Adams, of course, an extended family. Deacon Early Cathcart. We pray for Sister Butler. Sister Butler had a procedure done, but she's doing fine. She's home. Pray for Mother Sarah Powell. She was in the hospital as well, and she is home. Amen. Pray for Eric Dunlap and his mother Esther Dunlap. Pray for Mary Elizabeth Pettis. This, they call her Little Mary, um, Sister Mary Pettis. Uh, she had a procedure today, in fact. So let's keep her in prayer. Sonia Cathcart and all those who are on, uh, on in uh, assisted living facilities. Uh, Stephen Samuels, amen, one, another one of our cancer survivors. Pam Allison uh, and all cancer survivors. Pray for all pastors, apostles, and, 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 and bishops, and, and, and leaders, and Christians everywhere. Pray for Reverend Anthony Sanders, Ben Harper, Ramsey Crawford, uh, the homeless population. Let's pray for Israel and the, and, and, and the peace of Jerusalem and the war in the world. Praying for uh, family unity. When you pray for family members, get you a spiritual hit list. Pray for salvation. Pray that they are filled with the Holy Spirit and pray that they will be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray together. Um, of course, there's some others on the back. Our schools, our students. We've got some online prayers. Praise God. We're praying for you. Tamisha and Jazz Price. Tamisha and Jazz Price praying for you. Dorothy Farley. Amen. Restoration from knee replacement surgery in Jesus' name. Uh, deliverance of family members from drugs and alcohol, uh, alcoholism. We pray for Felicia Malker. Healing in uh, leg and also financial. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We stand with you. All right. We've got some more names. All right. Adrian uh, Walker, uh, Andrea McFadden and family. Amen. Diane Barnett, uh, Sylvia Smith and family. In the name of Jesus. We stand with you. Amen. In prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are there others on the line? Hallelujah. Praise God. If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mike Brown, in the name of Jesus. Mike Brown. Are there others? Amen. Graham. Graham. That's right. Mike Graham. I'm sorry. Amen. Quickly. Awana. Lawana Pearson. Amen. Other names. Hazel Brandon, in the name of Jesus. Are there others? The Whitworth family, we continue to lift you all up. Amen. Others, all elected officials and those uh, in, who work with the election bureau. Amen. Gloria Adams on the prayer line. Amen. Hallelujah. What's your aunt's name, Sister Rose? Evora. 
All right, Miss Evora, we pray for you and your family. Amen. Let's believe God together. Yes, ma'am. Sit. Yes, thank you. See, again, these, these, that, that could have easily been Gastonia somewhere, but the citizen of Baltimore, not only those who lost lives, the ship, and those who have to travel. Amen. Can you imagine, you know, if that would have happened to 85, you know, some folk got to go to work. How are we going to get there? So all of these things we have to think about and, and make some more sensitive but more prayerful. Resilient in prayer. That's what God wants us to think this week. Resilient in prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, God, that you are our God. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We give you glory for everything. And Father, all these names and petitions and prayers and, and praises we lift to you with thanksgiving and, and know that you said if we ask anything in the name of Jesus, it shall be done. By faith, we believe it. We count it done for our families, our children, our spouses, our co-workers, our communities, our pastors, our churches. We pray for elected officials. We pray for those you've anointed. God, we just pray for all of these concerns. We give them to you right now. And by faith, we stand on the promise, assurance that all your promises in Christ are yes and amen. Thank you for this Bible empowerment we lesson. Thank you for Holy Week. We honor you. We praise you and we give you glory. And we thank you and count it done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, I want to remind us tonight at 7 o'clock, we won't have Bible study. There's a play, there's a drama, uh, amen, Holy Week schedule, amen, our, uh, our uh, music and arts ministry have a, a dynamic presentation tonight at 7 o'clock. And then on Friday at noon, listen, come out, invite family, friends at 12 noon. Uh, Pastor Lathan Woods will be with us at 12 noon on Friday and then on Sunday morning. Those who like to get up a great while before day at 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. Uh, worship and then 10 o'clock worship on Sunday on Resurrection Sunday. God bless you. We love you. Until next time, we'll see you. It's time for your TBC Connection, keeping you in the know for what's ahead. Experience a transformative Holy Week at the Tab. Join us for The Sacrifice on Wednesday, March 27th at 7 p.m., a stirring production by our Dramatic Arts Ministry. On March 29th at 12 p.m., join our Good Friday service with guest speaker Bishop Lathan Wood. Celebrate the resurrection with sunrise service at 6 a.m., followed by breakfast and a resurrection message at 10 a.m. Let's come together to celebrate the love of our risen Savior. Exciting news. The Denamis, a Christian awards event celebrating remarkable individuals in the church and community, has several of our own up for nomination. Pastor of the Year, Dr. Benjamin Hinton. First Spouse of the Year, Lady Tangela Hinton. Usher of the Year, Travelis Hunt. Female Vocalist of the Year, Whitney Turner. Male Vocalist of the Year, Ricky Collins. Audiovisual Team of the Year, Tabernacle Baptist Church. Choir Praise Team of the Year, Tabernacle Baptist Church. You can vote until April 6th. Feel free to vote as many times as you'd like. To vote, visit our website, tbcgastonia.org. Tab leaders, join us for the Leadership Advance Empowerment Session, scheduled for Saturday, April 13th from 9 to noon, with breakfast being served at 8.30 a.m. We are delighted to have Bishop John McCullough as our guest facilitator, leading a session on staying spiritually filled as a leader. Are you ready to shine and elevate your business to new heights? We invite you to be a part of the upcoming spring edition of our Business Expo, sponsored by the Women's Ministry. This event is open to all businesses and is the ultimate platform to showcase your outstanding products and services. To secure your spot, all vendors are requested to fill out and submit the registration form located on our website, tbcgastonia.org. Don't miss out on this opportunity to showcase what makes your business unique. Calling all married and engaged couples. Whether you're brand new to TBC or have been part of our community for a while, we've got something special planned just for you. Join us on April 13th from 1 to 6 p.m. at Martha Rivers Park in Gastonia. Come and enjoy a day in the beautiful outdoors where we'll bond over fun activities, 
meaningful conversations, and laughter. It's the perfect opportunity to strengthen your relationship, build lasting friendships with other amazing couples outside of TPC, and create cherished memories together. Mark your calendars. We can't wait to see you there. Join us for the Legacy and Founders Scholarship Campaign. Our goal is to raise $50,000 to support students' education beyond high school. Attend our scholarship rally on April 21st at 10 a.m. with special guest speaker, Reverend Dr. Richard C. Flippin, and musical guests, Mitchell Johnson and Rehoboth. There are multiple ways to support our campaign. Visit tbcgastonia.org to contribute online or give in person. Let's invest in our youth's future together and create a legacy of educational excellence. This has been your TBC Connection, keeping you in the know for what's ahead.